Rock and Roll to the World! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are with Smile Musa TV. Let's do one thing at a time. You can enjoy here, mad crypto travel and songs. Of okay, uh, I'd like to present to you uh, a story of Car Pride, Pride Rich Cows. He's a kid. I think you have to watch my previous YouTube on Car Pride Rich Cows, the discovery of Car Pride Rich Cows. And anyway, uh, he actually is uh, at, at, at his early age, about five years old, he was able to solve this problem. So his teacher asked them to answer, to, to find the sum no, of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 48, 49, 50, up to 100. So of course that's difficult for a younger younger for a children five years old for that matter. So everyone really struggled to answer the, the question. But uh, of course that's a genius individual. So he came up with a solution. Welcome back to Hispan. Okay. So he had seen that You can add actually, no, 1 plus 100, you get 101, 2 plus 99, it's 101, and so on, and, no, 49 plus 52, it's 101, 50 plus 50, 1, it's 101. So, he thought that it's, there are 101, all the sum, and there are 50 possible pairs, so it's 5,050, so he got it right. But actually, he, the way he solved it is this way. So, the sum of 100, 1 to 100, then you rearrange that, 100 to 1. So, you always have 101, no? 1 plus 100, 101, 2 plus 99, 101. So, when you add them all, so that's actually 2 times 100, 2 times S100, no? So, you got 10,100. But since we're only adding the S to 100, S sub 100, so we have to divide that by 2. So, we got S 100 or 5,050. So, actually, uh, Cal Pride Ridge goes, introduced this formula. Okay? So that was the assignment given to him. So rearranging that, okay. So you can have the two s is actually so it's actually n plus one, no? It's all n plus one. Huh? So that's s two s. So divided by two, so you get n times n plus one divided by two. Okay. So basically, that's problem solving. Now, whether you like it or not, whether you are going to be a mother, a father, a teacher, computer programmer, scientist, a researcher, a business owner, a coach, Mathematician, manager, doctor, lawyer, food technologies, <laughs> architect, drafters, bankers, the list can go on. Problem solving is everywhere. So some people think that you either can do it or you can't. But contrary to that belief, it can be learned. No, problem solving is a learn can be learned trade. Even the best athletes and musicians had some coaching along the way and they have a lot of practice so that's what it takes no to be a good problem solver now one of the primary reasons people have trouble with problem solving uh, 
is that there is no single procedure that works all the time. Each problem is slightly different. Now, thus, problem solving requires a practical knowledge about the specific situation. If you misunderstand either the problem or the underlying situation, you may mis make mistakes or incorrect assumptions. So to this, it's often useful to get used to an organized approach to problem solving and decision making. Uh, it is for this reason that in this subject, GE114, Mathematics in the Modern World, we are exploring the Julia's four steps in problem solving. Okay. Now, basically, we need reasoning. When we say reasoning, this is actually uh, drawing the inferior inferences or conclusions from known assumed facts. Okay. Uh, we say we solve a problem when solving a problem one must understand the question. We have to gather all pertinent facts, analyze the problem, you know, compare with previous problems you know, or note or similarities and differences. Perhaps you have to use picture or formula to solve problem. Now, uh, to begin with, let us have this learning objective. objectives. So at the end of this lesson, uh, you're expected to apply the folios strategy in problem solving use different techniques in problem solving okay so kindly be guided by this learning objective okay now when we talk of folios problem solving but before before going further let us know who is george folia okay George Folia is, is known as the father of modern problem solving. Did extensive studies and wrote numerous mathematical papers uh, and three books about problem solving. So in this subject, I'm going to in this lesson rather, I'm going to show you his method you know, of problem solving to help you uh, step to you through the, these problems. No. Folia, who actually is a Hungarian mathematician, so he made uh, several contributions no, in different fields of mathematics. Okay. So it was in 1945, uh, George Folia published the book uh, entitled How to Solve It. So which quickly became his most prized publication. Why? It sold over a million copies. And even it has been translated into seven, 17 languages. No? So in this book, he identifies four basic principles of problem solving, which will be the, the main core discussion of our lesson for the day. Okay? So... Folia created his famous four steps for problem solving, which is used all over to eight people in problem solving. So we're trying to say that this problem solving strategy may apply to any field. No? So now, the, the four steps are seemingly simple. No? The four steps are seemingly simple to gain competence in problem solving. So let's examine each of these steps and determine what is involved. Okay? Welcome back to Ismail Muzat! So let's have the first one. So it's understand understand the problem. So when you say you understand the problem, oh, understanding the problem, in a class, understanding pro the problem 
is how the problem is solved. So if you're able to understand the problem, that's 50% solved. And in fact, actually, this is the most important half, half of the strategy. So sometimes the problem lies in understanding the problem. If you are unclear as to what needs to be solved, then you are probably going to get the wrong results. So in order to show an understanding of the problem, you, of course, need to read the problem carefully. Sounds simple <laughs> enough, but some people jump the gun and try to start solving the problem before they read the whole problem. So once the problem is read, you need to list all the components and data that are involved. So this is where you will be assigning your variable. Now, to help you out how to understand the problem, let us guide you with the following series of questions. So you have to ask the following series of questions. Do you understand all the words used in stating the problem? What are you asked to find or show? So you should know, know what is the problem all about. Third, can you restate the problem in your own words? So can you translate the problem? And can you think of a picture or a diagram that might help you understand the problem? Okay. So, is there enough information to enable you to find solution? So basically, the next step would be to devise a plan. Okay? So you are to devise a plan. So in other words, you are to translate the problem into a plan. So when you devise a plan, you have to come up with a way to solve the problem. Uh, it could be setting up a conclusion, drawing a diagram, and making chart are all ways that can go about solving your problem. So in this tutorial, we will be setting up equations for each problem. And most probably, we will be also coming up with different strategies, no? problem solving strategies or plan how to settle a problem. Okay? Now, let us be let uh, I'd like you to come up I'd like you to list the following questions when you devise a plan okay so there are many reasonable ways to solve the problem uh, I said earlier that you can come up with an equation you can come up with a drawing a diagram making a chart and many things okay so there are many reasonable ways to solve a problem the skill lies in choosing an appropriate strategy. So, def definitely problems, no? each problem, especially in mathematics, uh, there are problems that require a specific problem-solving strategy. So, the best learned by solving many problems, uh, as they say, practice makes perfect. So, you will find choosing a strategy in increasingly easy so you keep on practicing and you master master those different uh, problem solving strategy so you will find choosing a strategy increasingly easy okay so after you have understand the problem you have the plan so the next step is to carry out the plan okay, you have to implement it okay so put your plan into action so this is the next next step, no? the third step. No? When we say to carry out the plan, it is now to solve. Uh, well, to solve it is a big thing. So this is where you solve the equation, or you, this is where you you implement the the chart that you design or the table. You have to complete the table that you plan to use. Okay. So this is the steps, no? Now, please be guided by the following questions for you to, to be able to have, to carry out the plan precisely. No? So, of course, this step is usually easier than devising the plan. In general, all you need is care and patience. So given that you have the necessary skills, no? Uh, of course, uh, there are plans that 
while the plants are not foolproof so and there are different problem solving strategy so prob there are problems that there are, there are problems that requires uh, a specific strategy so if you think that you have to persist no with the plan that you have chosen you have to persist be patient if it continues <laughs> even you have those patience you you persist but if it continues not to work you have also to consider to discard it and choose another so don't be misled by 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 having one plan only this is how mathematics is done even by professionals we we also use other strategies if we think this particular strategy that does does not work we use another strategy okay now uh when when you already have your solution so the next thing to do is look back you check and interpret you review the solution you may be familiar with expressions don't look back don't do that here in problem solving in problem solving it is good to look back to check and interpret basically check to see if you use all information and that the answers make sense so if your answer does check out make sure that you write your final answer with the correct labeling that is another important thing so please be guided by the following uh, guide questions in in doing step number four no so much can be gained by taking the time to reflect and look back at what you have done what worked and what didn't so doing this will enable you to predict what strategy to use to solve for future problems especially for similar problems no now let me introduce one problem it's a simple problem okay now let me read it in a blueprint of a rectangular room the length is one inch more than three times the width so find the dimensions if the perimeter is to be 26 inches okay i think this is a good problem for adt students now in a blueprint of a rectangular room the length is one inch more than three times the width so find the dimensions if the perimeter is to be 26 inches but before going further what are the four steps in polya's problem solving strategy okay very good the first one is understanding the problem the second one is devise a plant yes the third one is carry out the plant when you say carry out the plan you solve and finally step number four is you look back or check and interpret no so we'll be using that for uh george Foller strategy in solving this problem okay okay step one understand the problem so make sure that you read the questions carefully several times if it requires no now the problem earlier we are to look for the length and the width of the rectangle so since the length can be written in terms of width we will let width equals to no, w be equals to width now in the problem it says the length is one inch more than three times the width so we will say that one plus three the value is equals to the length okay that's the problem so we will say we now come up with a step two no we proceed to step two that's device a plan and we can use the concept of perimeter of course no we know perimeter is equals to two times the length plus two times the width so we have the formula p equals to 2l plus 2 the value okay so it's self-explanatory now we said earlier that the perimeter is 26 inches and we know the length the length is 1 plus 3 w so times 2 plus of course the width to the value that's give you the 
perimeter. Okay? So, that is the plant, meaning you come up with a, an equation. So, the next is, you know, carry out the plan. Okay? So, you carry out the plan. So, in other words, we are to solve, no? We are to solve. So, step three is carry out the plant. So, the plant was to solve 26 is equals to 2 times 1 plus 3 W, which is the length, plus 2 W. Okay? So, that is the, the equation is that we come out with the problem. So, remove the brackets by distributive property. So, you have 26 is equals to 2 plus 6W plus 2W. Well, why 6W? That's 2 times 3. So after that, you combine like terms. So you have 26 is equals to 2 plus 8W. Then we want to simplify the equations. So we can use the inverse of addition. What is the inverse of addition? That is the inverse of a given number and that is the negative of a given number. So we want to remove uh, 2 on the right side, bring it to, into the left. That's why we add the inverse of 2, which is negative 2. So we got 8W is equal to 24. Of course, uh, uh, inverse of multiplication is uh, we have the, the reciprocal or the, no, the reciprocal of the number. So what number can... Divide 8 in such a way, it becomes 1. So, of course, 1 8. Right? So, or we divide actually both sides by 8. So, we got 3. Weed is equals to 3 W. So, after you carry out the plan, the next is to look back. Okay, you look back. So, if weed is 3, the length, which is 1 inch more than 3 times the width, will have to be 10. So the perimeter of a rectangle with, with a width of 3 inches and length of 20 inches, thus comes out to be 26. So the final answer is width is 3 inches, length is 10 inches. Okay. So I hope you we were able to see the, the four steps in Polya's problem solving. Now, actually, there are several problem solving strategies that you can use in when you devise the plan okay so these are just the nine problem solving strategies that you can utilize actually there are other we have guess and check look for patterns make an orderly list and so on and so forth okay they are provided in this video okay now as we proceed further uh, let me introduce some problems and how we solve it using George Folia strategy using different uh, problem solving strategy enumerated here in uh, we will not discuss all but we will pick some okay <clears throat> so look for a pattern so when we say a pattern class it's a sequence no? a sequence is a pattern involving an ordered arrangement of numbers so first we need to find a pattern if you are able to find a pattern then ask yourself as you search for a pattern <clears throat> are the numbers growing steady steadily larger steadily smaller how each number is related okay now let's have this one example 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. Okay. What, is, what are the next numbers? Okay. So find the next two numbers. Okay. Our solution to this is the pattern is, is each number is increasing by 3. Diba? So the next two numbers will be 16 and 19. Okay. Example 2. 1, 4, 9, 16. Find the next two numbers. 
that's still a sequence. So it looks like each successive number is increased by the next odd numbers. No? So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 7 is 16. So the next number would be 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay, 25 plus 11 is 36. Okay, I hope it's clear. Next is, uh, we have this 10, 7, 4, 1, negative 2. Find the next two numbers. Okay, solution. In this sequence, uh, the numbers are decreasing by 3, right? So the next number, two numbers will be negative 2 minus negative 3 is equals negative 5. Negative 5 minus, minus 3 will give you negative 8. So the final answer is negative 5 and negative 8. Okay. Now, let's have another problem-solving strategy using, using looking for a pattern. So our number there is 1, 2, 4, 8. So find the next two numbers. This example is a little bit harder. <laughs> the numbers are increasing but not by a constant. Um, maybe it's a factor. 1, 2, 4, 8. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So you will see, so each number is being multiplied by 2. So 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. These are the next numbers. Okay. Now, another problem-solving strategy is guess and check. Guess and test. So, make a guess and test to see if it satisfies the demands of the problem. If it doesn't, you can alter the appropriate and you can, you can alter the guess appropriately and check again. Uh, keep doing this until a problem is solved, until you have a solution to the problem. So example, uh, Mr. Jones has a total of 25 chickens and cows on, on his farm. So how many of each does he have if altogether there are 76 feet? Okay. So Mr. Jones has a total of 25 chickens and cows on his farm. So there are 25. How many of each does he have? How many of each does he have if all together there are 76 feet? Okay. Now, let's follow George Pollett's strategy as to understanding the problem. So, we are given in the problem that there are 25 chickens and cows. And all together there are 76 feet. So, we know for the fact that chickens have 2 feet and cows have 4 feet. So, we are therefore trying to determine how many cows and how many chickens Mr. Jones has on his farm. Now, going to guess and test, along with making a tab many times, the strategy below uh, is used with guess and test. So, we can make a table and look for patterns. So, the procedure will be make a table. This will be device a plan, no? So, make a table reflecting the data in the problem. If done in an orderly way, such a table will often reveal patterns and relationships that suggest how the problem can be solved. Okay, so this will be our table. No? So let's start with chickens and cows. So this is by guessing, no? guess and test. So 20 chickens, 5 cows, that's 25. So number of Chicken feet, so if there are 20, times 2, it's 40. If there are 5 cows, times 4, there are 20. But it's equal to 60. Huh? So I think it's wrong. Because there, there must be only 76 feet. Okay. So if we increase chicken, 21, so we have to decrease cow, 4. That's still 25. So 21 times 2, where it's 42. 4 times... 4, it's 16. That's 58. So basically, no, notice we are going in the wrong directions because the total number of feet is decreasing. So if we have 19, 6, 19 chickens, 6 cows, 
So that will be 38, 24, 62. Ah, it's increasing. So better the total number of feet are increasing. So we have 15 chickens, 10 cows. Let's give you 30 and 40 where with this you have 70. So we, we move farther, no? So 12. Huh? So we decrease the number of chickens. So there are only 12 chickens and 13 cows. So 12 times 2 feet, that's 24. 13 times 2, uh, 13 times 4, that's 52. So when we add 76, ta-da! We were able to solve by guess and check. Now we look backward, no? whether our guess and check is correct. So 12 plus 13 is 25 heads. No? That's correct. 24, uh, 12 chickens and 13 cows. So when we say 12 times 2, it's 24. 13 times 4, because there are 4 feet a cow have. So we have 72, 6 feet. So we have found the solution to this problem. So I could use this strategy when there are limited numbers of possible answers. And when two items are the same, but they have one characteristic that is quite different. So now, no? there are other problem solving strategy that you may use to answer the problem. Okay, let's have another one. Oh, so we have here tips. No? Uh, so we have the, the problem is Laura has three green chips, oh, three green, four blue chips, and one red chip in her bag. So what fractional part of the bag of chips is green? Okay, so let's understand the problem. What do we need to find? You need to find how many chips are in all. Then you need to find how many of the chips are green. So after that, you know the problem. You know, devise a plan. How can you solve the problem? So you can draw a picture, of course, no? to show the information. Then you can use the pictures to find the answers. So we know solve. No? Draw it chips. So we have G, 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 B, 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 R. So three out of the chips are green. Okay, hope we solve it. Next is uh, working backward. This is another uh, another problem solving strategy. No? In my list, it's problem solving number six. No? So Karen is thinking of a number. If you double it and subtract seven, you obtain 11. What is Karen's number? So this is what I'm saying. No problem like this requires a specific strategy to use. So working backwards is the best uh, problem solving strategy. So our solution is we start with 11 and we work backward. No? So then the, op the opposite of subtraction is addition. Ba? So we start with 11 and work backwards. Then the opposite of subtraction is addition because there we subtract 7 to obtain 11. So we'll add 7 to 11 and we are now 18. Okay. The opposite of doubling something is divided by 2. So 18 therefore divided by 2 is 9. So this should be our answer. No? 9 times 2 is 18 minus 7 which equals to 11. Okay. We have the right answer. Now, uh, just to recall, uh, this is problem solving strategy uh, using variable to find the sum of a sequence. And we introduced you the Gauss strategy for sequence, my story earlier. But this is for an odd number of terms. So you find the sum of 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 14 plus 16 plus 18. So, Carl Pride Rich goes using his theory, his it's formula so we have this no? so again we, we are rearrange 2 to 18 and the reverse of that is 2 to 18 so when you take the sum it's always 20 diba? so how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so there are nine integers so times that their sum is 20 
divided by 2, that gives you 90. Okay? Or you may use this formula. The first given, 2, and the last is 18. So 2 plus 18 is 20. N is 2. Okay? N is 2. So 2 plus 2 plus 18 is 20. Okay? How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 times 20 is 180 divided by 2 is 90. Okay. Now, are you ready for the quiz? Yes, we have quiz. Okay. Uh, for the quiz, I want you to open your GCR because this problem is posted in your GCR. Okay. Go and check your GCR. Good day. Uh, for those who have not yet subscribed, if you love... Uh, this kind of discussion in the YouTube channel. So I would appreciate for you to uh, subscribe. Thank you. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Welcome back to Hispanusa TV! Alright! Rock!